exploitation always seems the worst when it comes from one person without an overcompensating camera, putting millions of eyes on a vulnerable person. This goes without saying, but these content creators have a thousandfold more money than any homeless person, yet they still need the help of the homeless to generate clicks and views, to generate more money and revenue. In the early 2010s, a trend of helping the poor started and still somewhat exists today. At first, the concept seemed so innocent, but over time, the morals depreciated, and it was evident that the goal was not to help the poor. That was just part of the process. The real goal of these content creators is to leech off the poor. FusiTube is a prime example of content creators implicated for exploiting the homeless. In one of his videos, he dressed up as his idea of what a homeless person looks like, what many consider disgustingly offensive and poorly executed. His video idea was this. He would reward anybody who helped him while he was in his homeless person getup. While this may seem good-hearted to give back to those who give, it also gives his 10 million subscribers an idea that helping poor people out may be beneficial, since it may just be FusiTube in disguise and may get incentivized by doing so. Tanner Fox is another creator who was accused of capitalizing on the circumstances of the homeless. In one of his videos titled, giving Yeezys to homeless people, he starts off his video with the line, did you think I was gonna walk up with a pair of Yeezys and give it to the homeless? In reality, he just sold one pair to buy supplies to give around to the homeless. He films their faces crying in disbelief of what a good deed this young man has done, but at the consequence of their privacy. Sure, it helped out a few homeless people to get by for a week, but more than that, it paints Tanner Fox as a good and charitable man, a saint. His approach, like so many other content creators, is considered to be taking advantage of the poor, generating ad revenue, content, subscribers, and affiliates. What's a $100 given to the poor when in return they can get thousands or tens of thousands of dollars in return from just one video? This type of video content depreciates the struggles that the homeless go through and demoralizes what otherwise would have been selfless acts, instead acting like an investment which yields a monetary profit. But even without specific instances, Critics claim that it's easy to tell from titles and thumbnails that most of these content creators who capitalize on poverty porn only want the clicks. From an overly exaggerated gloomy look on the thumbnail to putting emotional on the video's title, these content creators are only out for clout at the expense of others. Content creators exploiting homelessness for their gain is just the tip of the iceberg. You have to really look up the ladder to see who's actually hurting the homeless and making even more money off of them than some measly creator with a video camera. We are talking about major corporations, the richest of the rich, and even the government. Corporations have never been for the common man. We all know that it's really about making money off the consumer, and they have been quite successful, as you are well aware. A killer example of this was the US cotton industry in the 1800s. It grew from a $150,000 industry to an $8 million empire by the early 1800s. They profited not from selling cotton to fuel the booming fashion industry, but they profited more from the slave labor to which many corporations conveniently turned the other cheek. More cotton, more sales, more money. That was the end-all be-all, and companies didn't care who died. 
All they cared about was getting more labor to meet the growing demand. Corporations these days have only gotten smarter and richer since they found out they can't force workers to stay 80 hours a week and legally mangle miners. A lot more laws have cropped up since the last century to keep a fair game. Even with the laws, for many mega-rich corporations, it's easy to jump over the obstacles with big lawyers in their arsenal. It's only the news and public opinion that has brought their actions to light. A prime example of this is Jack A. Brown III, the CEO and founder of a nonprofit company, Core Services Group. Jack A. Brown III, who's been accused of exploiting the homeless in New York City. In particular, documents show that this CEO has dipped his fingers into manipulation of the prison and the homeless population, fraud, and nepotism. It has been known that CORE operates many shelters throughout New York City. Beside the homeless shelter business, sources claim that Brown had a hand in bribing politicians when he was the executive at the private prison, where he also somehow got his friends and family into high-paying positions. On to the shelter gig, records show that the quality only went down as time went on. Undercooked food, vermin infestation, moldy rooms, and fights would litter these shelters. It slowly seemed less of a shelter and more of a punishment facility. Security guards hired to keep the shelter safe. Only there's reports of them sleeping on the job. Fist fights were happening left and right. Drug use was prevalent. According to a report in 2017, these shelters have been getting $352 million to stay in operation. That's more than enough to keep tens and thousands of homeless people happy and content. Yet here we are, with many reports stating that Brown has been getting a portion of this budget to keep in his own wallet. Of course, CORE has been profusely denying all allegations towards them and instead restating that the organization has done a lot of good. But is there anything really good about milking obscene amounts of money off of the homeless? The game doesn't end there. The story is that in Washington, D.C., there are eviction companies where they hire homeless men to evict families from their homes. Specifically, these companies send out vans to homes and hire homeless men who have drug addictions and are desperate for cash to take care of the eviction process for them. These men only get paid $7 a day, with pay deducted if they decide to take the alcohol from the van. The alcohol is to numb their emotions and any sort of hope they may have left. Using the homeless to create more homeless is the best way to describe the situation. And funnily enough, once these families are left crying on the curb, now homeless, no information or resources are provided to them to find replacement housing or receive any sort of help. The homeless hire then moves on to the next family just to get that measly $7 taken advantage of because of their addiction and position in life. This only serves to further dehumanize the homeless. In this case, their purpose degraded to only be used as cheap tools. Because for these companies, they only need to find another desperate addict to save on business costs. There should be no shock or wonder when it comes to the government. They prefer to keep things in a neat little line so it's easy for them to keep their high-paying positions and stay in power. They also prefer to keep the rich in their back pockets when decisions are made, because who's going to fund their next campaign? Just kidding. Or am I? Now in modern day, scams are pretty normalized as sad as that may sound. California is the worst of the worst when it comes to affordable housing. 
prices soaring sky high is simply the new norm for those who live in SoCal. Paying $20 for a small burrito and a coffee that cost $3 to make is practically expected in parts of California. So you can easily guess where housing prices are headed. Californians are all too accepting to pay astronomical prices, and it's truly scary. But it should not have to be this way, especially when politicians in California have only encouraged higher rates on housing. Mike Bonin, a retired LA City Council member, was considered to have a more progressive stance. Bonin advocated for the housing first model that prioritizes getting the homeless permanent housing, regardless of their status. $527 million has been budgeted for LA's homeless population from 2021 to 2022 and $1 billion in funding has been allocated for the homeless crisis. However, many people have been conditioned to think that this housing fix will not help out people's core issues that have led them down the unfortunate path of homelessness, such as mental illness and addiction. The housing is just a temporary fix, as the process to get people off the streets is mostly at the discretion of the politicians and companies creating the housing. People will still continue to have problems with mental illness and have issues with obtaining basic necessities for survival. Sweeps are just the proclamation of what the government really thinks of the homeless. They think of them as a burden and a problem that they can just conveniently sweep under the rug, out of sight, out of mind. At the beginning of the pandemic, the government thought it would be a great opportunity to sweep big places of homeless encampments. Encampments in Los Angeles, such as Echo Park, Venice Beach, and MacArthur Park are places known for being homeless hotbeds. Reports claim that at these sweeps, there were over a hundred people getting detained, brutalized, and scattered all over Los Angeles without an actual solution being provided. It's kind of like slapping a band-aid on a severed limb. It does nothing to solve the actual problem. Two million dollars was spent in policing costs just for the Echo Park Lake encampment alone. In order to actually police the homeless, the local enforcement demanded more funding, which would be paid by who? The taxpayers, of course. Add to the fact that California reported a surplus of $49 billion this past year, yet California is home to one-fifth of the total homeless population in the United States, with no foreseeable solution in sight. Just like corporations, governments are in the business of making money, and at this point, simply pretending that they are doing something, no matter just how bad the homeless crisis has become. The cycle continues, and only seems to be speeding up and getting worse with each passing year. The homelessness crisis continues to grow and dominate, and the solution of the government will remain static and use the same vague approach. People will continue to leech off the harsh reality of others for their own personal gain, as greed hasn't changed from previous centuries. However, it may be that more and more people are starting to wake up to the problem. With the power of digital media, more unfair practices are coming to light and being exposed. But this begs the question, can enough change actually happen that people will take action on the rich who take advantage of the poor? The cycle seems impossible to break, but it has to start somewhere. If this was an eye-opening video to you, go ahead and like and subscribe. Until next time, this is Eat the Rich.